Okay, so welcome to uh, another video from me. So today we're going to be uh, having a quick look at the Ubiquiti USG, which is the uh, Unify Security Gateway. And uh, we're also going to be looking at one of their access points. Uh, it's going to be the Unify Access Point Lite. So uh, yeah, let's um, quickly, I'm just quickly going to say what I'm going to do. So at the moment, the network is all set up. I've uh, tested it all out and it's all working fine. So what the aim of this video is, is to just show you how it's all connected up, how it's wired, uh, and also a little bit of the uh, the Unify interface, which I'm looking at straight now in front of me. I will show you that in a uh, in a bit later on in the video. So yeah, let's go down quickly, and I will show you the uh, gateway all set up and uh, also the access point. Okay, so this is the Unify uh, security gateway here, the USG. Uh, it's got a console port, it has a WAN port, it has a LAN port, and then it has a WAN slash LAN port slash VoIP port, um, which is uh, not being used by me at the moment uh, because I don't have an extra LAN, uh, an extra LAN, an extra WAN, or I don't have VoIP. But that is there if you need it. So basically, this black cable is coming from my modem. Uh, the modem is in another room, but this, is, this Ethernet is coming from uh, the, the modem and providing the internet. Uh, and this blue cable is going out to the switch which you can just about see here, uh, and that is providing uh, e uh, internet to my network. So it's a qu pretty small box. It's, uh, I think you can see the blue. Yeah, you can see the blue. Uh, blue means good uh, in, in Ubiquiti's case. And um, yeah, it's fully, uh, fully metal. It's a, it's a nice size box, pretty small. Uh, and it's uh, currently mounted. I mean, you can mount it wherever you want. It's got rubber pads on the bottom, so you can mount it on a desk. Uh, or you can do what I've done and mount it on, say, a wood or a wall or, or anything, for example. So let, that, that's pr pretty much the, uh, the gateway. It's pretty simple to set up. Just plug it in and, uh, and go. I'll show you all the configuration in a moment. Moving on to the, uh, the access point. So the access point isn't located in here, uh, but the power for it is. So this little black box here is a PoE injector, power over Ethernet injector. Uh, basically, it takes mains, mains voltage in, goes through the little transformer, and uh, sends out, uh, I believe it's 24 volts over PoE. I'm not, I'm not sure on that, I'll have to double check that. But anyway, it will send a, a voltage out on the, on the Ethernet going out to the switch, uh, not the switch, the access point. So this uh, black cable here, with the blue connector, uh, that goes up to the access point, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, and then you also have the LAN in, which so this white cable comes from the switch, uh, provides internet in and basically just sends it back out. So it just injects 24 volts or whatever the voltage is onto uh, the cable. Um, other than that, that is all fine. Uh, I also have a cloud key, uh, which is just out of shot. It's just up here. Uh, but basically that is, uh, I'll, I'll talk to you more about that once we get up to the controller because... Uh, there's a couple of options on which you on how you can control the ubiquity stuff. So this is basically the setup of in here. Uh, let's uh, just quickly show you the access point, and then we will go into the configuration. Okay, so this is the the access point. It's up here on the roof on the uh, on the first floor of our house. Uh, this so that cable which I showed you before coming out of that little black PoE injector. It runs through the house uh, and pops out of the ceiling down here and plugs into that. There's no other power cables you need. You literally just need one Ethernet cable. Uh, with PoE capability on it, um, plugged into that thing. So that is basically taking power. I mean, it's so easy to set up. Wherever you need to put one of these things, just run an Ethernet cable with PoE on it and um, plug it in, stick it to the roof, and you're good to go. So let's go and have a quick look at the configuration and uh, talk about it a bit more. Okay, so here we are looking at the Ubiquiti interface. So this is where we control everything. Um, so I mentioned briefly about the cloud key. Uh, there are a number of ways in which you can run this software. So to control any of the Ubiquiti Unify stuff, you need the Unify controller. Now you can run that on a computer, uh, which is running 24 seven. Um, or you can buy one of the cloud keys. Um, for us in the UK, it's about seventy pounds or so off Amazon. Um, and basically, it's a—it's just basically a, a mini PC, like a little Raspberry Pi sort of thing, uh, compacted into a, a small box. And uh, you can just plug that into your switch, 
and you can uh, access it via the uh, unify.ubunt.com or if that's how you say it. Uh, so yeah, you can basically access this from your phone or anywhere you want uh, outside of your network or inside of your network, uh, in which is the case here, I'm inside the network. Uh, but if I'm out and about, I can also quickly check on the network uh, and view its status from my phone while I'm uh, outside in the big wo big wide world. Big worldwide or whatever. Uh, so yeah, let's just quickly go through and have a look at uh, what we've got. So once you do, uh, once you've plugged everything in, you need to adopt your items. Um, so they will most likely show up here under the devices. Uh, here I, I have both of these adopted. Uh, and you can see their uptime, the version, the model, its status, the IP address and the device name. If they're not uh, adopted by your cloud key or your controller, it will come up along here saying it's adopted and the, I think the status says uh, um, pending adoption or something. Uh, but yeah, so you would click on that and adopt them. Once they're adopted, they will propagate out all the uh, settings which are in the controller and it will change to connected. So this is basically where you can see your your devices in your your ubiquity devices. Uh, let's say uh, I only have the router, so the USG and the in an access point. I don't have the switch yet uh, because the switch is uh, pretty expensive, and I can't afford one of them at the moment unless ubiquity wants to give me one to try. Um, hint, hint. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the uh, the USG router. So. As I mentioned before, you have uh, there are actually four ports. If you remember, one of them is a console, and you can't use that to. Uh, you just use that basically uh, for physical connection to the device to uh, diagnose and configure. If you want to do it via the uh, command line, we're not going to be doing command line here today. We're just going to be doing it all via the uh, controller. So you can see the WAN. Uh, the WAN actually is orange. Uh, that doesn't mean it's not working. It just means uh, it's got a uh, it's on a, a 10 by 100 connection. Uh, that is only because the modem isn't a gigabit uh, modem, uh, and it wouldn't matter anyway if it was because our connection in the uh, in this house is only 50 meg, so that's fine. Uh, the LAN one port is labeled as a gigabit because that is a. I mean, all of these ports are gigabit capable. Um, and I have a gigabit switch, which is why this has this has shown up as green for gigabit. Uh, you do have two others, so you have disabled. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm not sure if LAN two is even um, used at the moment in the USG. Uh, it might be there for future expansion. Just I'm just going by the it's sort of hinted that it is disabled. Uh, it doesn't say disconnected, so I'm not sure if it actually is implemented yet. Uh, don't quote me on that. It could be implemented by now. Um, so yeah, basically everything you want to check about a device in the, the Unify, once you click it, it will show up in this little pop-up along the side. So you can check it, uh, you can view its overview, you can see its WAN. Uh, you can also see its performance. Uh, you can see its networks as well. So I have two networks here, it's just refreshed. Uh, you can just see, so yeah, the networks, I have the LAN and I have the guest network. Um, this is actually running on uh, VLANs, so we'll go into that in a little bit more. So yeah, I've got one connection, uh, but two LANs, so that may confuse people. Don't worry, I will show you that in a moment. And also config, so you can change the uh, the alias of the name. So I've called it USG Router because that's what it is. Again, you've got the WAN. Um, so you can connect your, you can change your connection type depending on what you what your internet provider gives you. For us, it's BT. Um, so we're actually using BT Home Hub at btbroadband.com. Password, you don't actually need a password for BT Broadbands, so you can pretty much put anything you want in there. Uh, IPv6, I don't think we have that yet, so it's just disabled. Uh, it hasn't made a difference anyway so far. And DNS, uh, if you want a fast internet provide, uh, a faster internet, uh, a new DNS has come out, 1.1.1.1 uh, and 1.0.0.1. So yeah, I'm using them. They're provided by Cloudflare, and uh, they have actually. Uh, I have noticed some slight improvements in DNS times. Uh, it won't give you a faster bandwidth. Uh, it will just improve your loading of pages, basically the DNS system. If you want to go and look up the DNS system, look it up. A um, couple of advanced options, 
And also you can manage the device, you can provision and uh, forget. If you forget the device, it will be uh, lost from this USG, uh, from this uh, controller, and it will have to be adopted again. Um, so we don't want to do that. Let's quickly have a look at the access point configs. So it's uh, an AC access point. So we, we have both uh, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz networks. Uh, this is basically just how much it's being utilized at the moment. If you hover over it, you can see how many packets it's uh, transmitted uh, and also how many gigabytes it's transmitted or megabytes, depending on how much you use it. You can see how many clients are connected. Let's also close this one down because that could get confusing. Uh, you can see your wired uplink. So this is uh, it's on a gigabit connection to the switch, uh, to that little PoE box we looked at. And then that goes to the switch. Uh, we can see how much traffic we've sent up and down along with how many packets. We can have a quick look at the different radios. So we have our 2.4 gigahertz and our five gigahertz ranges. Uh, we have our WLANs. So these are, I've got uh, two different Wi-Fi networks running, even though it shows four, uh, because technically it is four because it's running on the two different bandwidths. So we've got these two here, which are running on the 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth, and these two, which are running on the five gigahertz bandwidth. Again, I will show you all this setup later on. Uh, and again, you can see performance as well of the actual device. You can see clients connected currently. So we have 10 clients currently connected to this access point. And you can also do a bit of config as well. So you can change its name again. You can change the LEDs if they're on or not. You can change the radio strengths. Uh, you can change the WLANs. Uh, you can give it some services if you want. You can also look at the network so you can give it a static IP if you want to give it a static IP. Uh, you can do band steering, so I've preferred the 5 gigahertz because it's uh, faster overall. Airtime fairness, um, wireless uplinks, and you can also manage the device again, similar to what we had before. And tools, basically you can debug it, uh, which we don't really need to do uh, unless there's an issue, and also an RF environment. So this will, if you let this scan, it will scan all the frequencies and uh, sort of show you which ones are busy and which ones are not busy. So here we can see we don't really want to run on uh, 7, uh, 5 or uh, 9 because they're congested and busy. And again, the same with the uh, 5 gigahertz ranges. So let's have a quick look at what's next. Let's quickly show you the dashboard because we, uh, we skipped over that briefly. So... If you have all the devices uh, connected, if you only, ha so here I have the USG. Uh, I don't have a switch, but it shows up as a LAN connected anyway. And uh, I have a WLAN because I have an access point. If you only have one of the things, say you only have a wireless access point, uh, only this one will show up green. Uh, if you only have the USG, then only this and this, I believe will show up green. Uh, but because I've got a combination of devices, they all show up green. And uh, also, if you have the USG, you get these two working as well. So this shows you your latency. It also shows you uh, your throughput of your connection. And it also shows you, uh, if you hover over it, it shows you some connections. So you can actually get the USG to do a periodic uh, speed test. So this speed test was last run eight minutes ago. And uh, as you can see, I'm getting a 28 millisecond latency with 51, uh, 52 down and 13 up. Um, you can view all this later on. So down here you can see in real time it just changed briefly. Uh, we have 22 clients connected and also deep packet inspection. If you have the USG, you can do the deep packet inspection, which is actually a really cool uh, thing if you uh, like monitoring your network. So yeah, let's go into the statistics and uh, have a look at this. So this is the uh, deep packet ins inspection sort of in action. Let's close this down to give us more space. So overall, we've used nearly 40 gig of traffic over since it's been up. It's been up for about three days now. Uh, and you can see mostly it's network protocols followed by streaming media and so on and so on and so on down the list. Uh, you can see everything is broken down. Uh, we've got Facebook, so we've used, uh, we actually had a gigabyte to uh, Facebook's uh, IPs. Again, so say we want to find out who has been using too much Facebook, we can click on it and we can find out it's actually my sister's iPhone uh, using a lot of the uh, the data. Uh, if we want more details, we can actually click on, say, my sister's iPhone, and we can see that she's used Facebook a lot, followed by Instagram uh, and a few others. Uh, if you want more details, you can click on details, and you'll actually get 
a whole list of how much of what that device is actually used. Um, so you can also view it by users as well. So you see my PC is actually uh, the most active on the network, followed by my Shield TV. Uh, and again, you can break it down by apps as well. So this is actually pretty cool. Uh, I've actually, I, I quite like this feature. It's uh, pretty good. Um, we'll go to performance briefly. Though this is actually so this will show you your USG devices and everything plugged in. Uh, your Unity uh, Unified devices plugged in. Uh, so you can basically just see how it's performing over over time. Again, the same for the access point as well. Uh, we'll skip through this a bit quick now because we're we're dragging on a bit. Uh, that was performance. So we want to go to switch stats. I don't have a, U a unified switch. If you have a unified switch, uh, stuff will show up here, but I don't have one currently adopted. Speed test stats. So as I was saying before, it can do a speed test every uh, every I think ours is doing it every 20 minutes. Uh, so it will actually log and so you can view back and see how stable your connection is. Uh, as you can see, my connection is pretty stable uh, at about 52 meg, which is uh, all right for here in a little village out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and I'll quickly just show you the overview because uh, that was the last page we missed. So we can go to uh, the map. So you can actually list all your devices on the map. Uh, you can uh, So if you have multiple areas, uh, you can list everything down here. Um, so if you have a big arena setup or maybe a house setup, um, that's uh, pretty cool to do. Uh, devices we've already looked at, clients. Uh, so here we can see all the clients on the network. So we have our Wi-Fi connections. So these are all on the Wi-Fi and these are all connected on the LAN. You can see the cloud key here. That doesn't show up in the uh, unified devices. Um, because it is just basically a client connected. It's just a computer sort of thing running the Unify software. Uh, also, insights. So insights, you can see neighboring access points. Uh, so there's only one, and it's near the upstairs access point. Known clients, uh, these are all clients that have connected. Uh, it also, if you know, it also gives you quick options as well. So say you want to block someone, you can block them. Uh, and then basically it's just other stats about the system which we don't really need to go into. So let's go into the actual settings and configuration of the whole network. So here we have our site. So our site here is home. Uh, it's in the United Kingdom and we have our time zone of London, Edinburgh, Dublin and Lisbon. Uh, I've enabled advanced features. This is disabled by uh, default. So if you want more advanced control over your network setup, then give that a tick and you'll get some more cool features. Um, I've got automatically upgraded access point firmwares uh, just because it's easier. I don't have to worry about doing it manually. Um, some people could argue that that's uh, not a good thing, uh, but I've just left it on for now. So as I said before, this speed test thing, here you can set it to do a periodic speed test for every however many minutes you want. Uh, between 10 and 49 is currently possible. Uh, I don't know why it's 49, that's a bit of a strange. Uh, but even though it says it's in beta, I've had no issues with it so far and it's been pretty good. Uh, email alerts, I mean I haven't got email set up, but yeah you can do all of this. So this is basically that. Let's go to wireless networks. So if you want to create a new wireless network, it's really easy. You just click create new wireless network, give it a name, give it its uh, uh, security level. Um, also, if you want to do some extra advanced stuff in here, you can do that. So you can give it a VLAN and everything. Uh, you can apply guest policies if it's a guest network. Once you click save on that, it will add it to this list. It will then uh, propagate out to your access points and bang, there you go. You've got another wireless access uh, network, which is uh, pretty cool and extremely easy to do. So I have my main network here, which is the main Wi-Fi, which is Smith Wi-Fi. Um, and then I've got Smith Wi-Fi Guest, which is a guest network and it's on VLAN 2. Uh, more on that later. So, well, actually more on that now. So here we have our two networks. So we have our main LAN network, which is 192.168.1.1. Uh, well, that's actually uh, not the network itself. That's the, uh, the gateway IP. Um, but yeah, then we, then we also have our guest network, which is 192.168.2, um, and that's on VLAN 2. You can set this VLAN number to whatever you want, as long as it corresponds within the, the network itself. So basically, let's have a look at our guest network. So we've given it VLAN 
uh, 2. It's a guest network, so that's its purpose. And it's got a DHCP server set up. So once you save all of this and you've added a new network, again, it's simple uh, to do. You just type it all in here, give it a VLAN if you need to, uh, give it its IP, and that sort of stuff. You save it, that will propagate out to the USG, and um, then there you go, you've got your uh, another LAN, basically. So uh, the current setup I've got it as is like it's a router on a stick sort of thing. So I have one cable coming out to the LAN to the switch, but there's two VLANs. Uh, so virtual lands. So the guest network is on two. So if I connect someone on to the uh, guest Wi-Fi, for example, it will um, give them an IP from this range rather than this range. Uh, and also, if we move into the next setting, which is the firewalls and stuff, we can see that the guests also have their own firewalls. So if you're connected to the guest network, by default, you can't change these. These are by default by Unify. Uh, clients can only access DNS, uh, the captive portal, and allowed subnets. Everything else is dropped, so they can't actually get onto your uh, main LAN network, which is uh, good for security. So yeah, if you want to add more stuff, you can uh, you can add your firewall rules here. That you've got uh, in and out rules and local rules for every single subnet and uh, domain. Uh, again, you have port forwarding as well. So I've got CCTV and Plex set up. Uh, so I have these ports forwarded to the various devices which are running them services. Intrusion detection, uh, intrusion prevention system. I haven't played with this yet, um, but it could be a cool feature if uh, if I need to enable it for some reason. I could play around with it, but note it does actually limit the uh, the throughput. So that's probably the only reason why I haven't bothered to play with it so far. Uh, deep packet inspection is what I showed you earlier. That's what breaks everything down into, say, you can tell if people are using Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, if they're streaming from Netflix or whatever. Uh, guest control. Now, I haven't enabled this. Uh, I haven't set this up fully, but this is basically, say, if you went to a coffee shop and you connected, you get sent to uh, a website and then you have to log in. That's called a captive portal. I haven't set any of that up because I've got a password set on the Wi-Fi. So if anyone wants to connect to our guest Wi-Fi, they actually have to know the password. Um, and even then they're still secure. They're still restricted to their own subnet and everything. But yeah, you can enable this and you can set up simple password, no authentication, hotspot, Facebook Wi-Fi. I'm not sure what that is yet. Um, but yeah, I haven't played with that. But that is all options there if you want that as options. Profiles, uh, not too sure what they are yet. I haven't played with them. Services, you have different services along here. So you have some DHCP, you have some, uh, I mean, they're enabled, but we set that up earlier, as I showed you. Um, UN, uh, UPMP, uh, NTP, and uh, all sorts of stuff there. Uh, I haven't played with that too much, and it all seems to be fine so far. You have um, all of your users and admins here, and you also have uh, user groups. So this is pretty cool as well. So if I wanted to, I could create a new user group called guest. Uh, whenever a guest connects, um, they could, will be restricted by, uh, I can put bandwidth limits on them. So they can only say have uh, one meg down and one meg up. So they don't use all of our bandwidth because they're a guest on our network. Then finally, we have uh, the uh, controller. So we have our, we can put an API, map API key here. We can also put, um, we give the controller a name, give it its IP and all that sort of stuff. Notifications, I've left this as default for now. Uh, cloud access, so if you have a, cl a cloud key, uh, you can connect it up to here and this is how, uh, this is, so this enables you to be able to access it from anywhere. Um, elite device, I haven't played with that yet. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, maintenance as well, so you can tell it how much data you want to retain. Uh, you can also tell it to do backups and um, you can also update your firmware for your cloud key. Uh, and then finally, auto backups. So this actually takes a backup every day of the uh, the configs. So if I ever need to, I can uh, download these, I can restore them or I can delete them. But yeah, so that's basically the uh, Unify um controller and really sort of basic setup of uh, setting up the uh, USG with an access point. Uh, I would very much like to get a switch at some point, uh, I just can't afford one at the moment. 
So yeah, I'm going to end this now because it's been a pretty lengthy video, pretty in-depth into what the uh, Unify range can do. And uh, yeah. So yeah, again, just finally, that is uh, the overview of what it can do. It's really good. It's uh, I've been very impressed with the access point. Um, so what, before I had multiple access points because uh, just the Wi-Fi from, say, the BT Home Hub, for example, just wouldn't, it wouldn't cover the whole house. So I made the jump, got an access point, stuck it on the roof, and uh, yeah, we get uh, full speed Wi-Fi everywhere in the house, and also we get a, a pretty decent connection as well out in the garden. So yeah, I'm very happy with it. I definitely recommend the uh, Unify uh, products and the range. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to end it now. Thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you in a future video.